I mean, our watches, they stand out. They're more niche, though. And so I think the, one of the things we've done a good job, though, is educating the consumer on what the material is, the craftsmanship that goes into it. I mean, the way that they're made. Um, we've found that that really resonates with our customers or potential customers. They want to see more of that. Welcome to the Marketing Automation Hustle Podcast, where we break down the essential strategies of email marketing and automation to help e-commerce brands hyper-personalize their customer journey and increase sales on autopilot. So get ready to automate your marketing like a pro with Sendling's brand marketing manager and your host, Caitlin Hutchinson. Hey, podcast listeners. I hope you're having an awesome week and thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Marketing Automation Hustle. Before we jump into anything, I want to be sure to remind you guys about our awesome online course that we recently launched called E-Commerce Email Academy. It is the ultimate step-by-step -step email marketing course for e-commerce marketers, and we've put together 57 different video lessons, 10 course modules. There's a full stack bonus module that has case studies, expert interviews, checklists, all sorts of different tools for you to use, and you can enroll in that course and get an overview of everything that's in it at ecomemailacademy.com backslash podcast. That's ecomemailacademy.com backslash podcast. So for today's episode, I am lucky enough to have Ryan Beltran as my guest. He is the co-founder of Original Grain. They're a handcrafted watch company based right here in San Diego. And their watches tell a unique story through the materials they use, whether it be reclaimed whiskey barrels or 100-year-old stadium chairs from Yankee Stadium. So it's a very awesome brand. So welcome to the studio, Ryan. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's awesome that we finally made this happen. Yeah. It's like we're two weeks away from Christmas, so I'm sure business is crazy. It's crazy. It's booming. It's uh, We're in the heat of the battle right now. Yeah, I, I'm getting, um, you know, because I've had to stalk you before the podcast, <laughs> and now I'm getting all of your ads and your ads emails, and emails and stuff, and, so yeah. it's cool to be like, oh, great job. That's an awesome sale yeah. or whatever. So um, that brand is really cool. I actually kind of learned a little bit more about you on Jameson Slattery's podcast. Yeah. Because he was wearing one of your watches, okay. and it was the one I actually just mentioned in the intro. No, it was, was it, it that the whiskey? one. Probably was. No, it was a baseball one. It was a stadium chair. Yeah. Oh, watch. it was the Red Sox. We Red did, we Sox. We did one with Boston as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He would probably from, kill me there, for yeah. saying it was a yeah, Yankee don't, watch. Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I didn't. I had no idea that yeah. that was your brand. Um, and he kind of started telling me just a little bit about the business, and so that's what really prompted me to try to get you. Yeah in here because I just felt like your brand's really unique in that you have really interesting materials. Right. But that also creates a really um, kind of cool marketing piece to it. So tell me a little bit about how you yeah. started the company. Yeah. Well, we started in 2013. My brother and I uh, launched with the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, it, the story actually starts a couple years before that. I graduated from the University of Oregon, uh, decided to move to China. Pack wow. my bags and leave. Yeah, I know. China. What prompted the China move? Well, I, I had grown up in Eugene. I went to school and I'm a duck. I went to university. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. <laughs> uh, which we just lost a couple weeks ago. I'm pretty upset about Oh, that, you know? sad times. Nah. Uh, and I, I just, it was time for a change. I, I had a little bit of that entrepreneurial style. I wasn't necessarily your your kid, though, like slanging lemonade at the at the stand growing yeah, up, you yeah. know, I, I, do, I wasn't necessarily that guy. Uh, -huh. uh, but something just, you know, it was like a light bulb moment. I said, it's kind of now or never, let's take a, let's take a risk. I knew everything for the most part, um, was manufactured in that region. Um, in particular, uh, watches, which mm -hmm. is what we, what, what I landed on. Yeah. Um, you know, you have Switzerland and China. Those are the two, the two major areas. Um, and I was inspired by physical products growing up. I was kind of into sneakers and fashion and just kind of that being a, a part of who you are, self-expression, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. And, you know, so I knew that I wanted to create a brand. I knew that I wanted it to be uh, in the men's space, uh, in particular fashion and then accessories. And it kind of whittled my way down to watches. So, um, yeah, there's a whole backstory on how I kind of discovered it and thought mm -hmm. it was a cool product. Reminded me of home, the whole wood thing. Yeah. Um, well, then it, that's kind of something I wanted to ask you about. I mean, you landed on watches, but what kind of sparked that whole idea of you know, sourcing like unique materials for it. For sure. I mean, when we, when we launched, it was, we really used exotic hardwoods, things from all over the world, whether mm -hmm. it was maple wood from right here in our backyard to one well, in the U S I mean, North America, um, different 
exotic hardwoods like rosewood uh, from Africa, Africa, ebony from Indonesia, things like that. Uh-huh. that they were really cool. Totally. Uh, but Andrew and I started thinking, like, what are what are deep? What's a deeper, more authentic story we could tell, and something that's also more sustainable in a way, right? So we thought, you know, why not use reclaimed wood? Uh, we were actually at a trade show, and this guy walked by the booth who represented uh, Jim Beam, and he oh, was like, nice. "Hey, have you ever thought about making watches out of whiskey barrels?" It's like, yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it was, it kind of ultimately what sparked the whole reclaim thing. And um, I always tell that story because I remember it was like our year one and we were hardly sell, signing any accounts up. We thought it was a total, you know, waste of time. And yeah. that whole thing led us down in a path of, you know, exciting new reclaim materials that tell a pretty deep to, and unique story. Yeah, totally. So. And how, I'm sure, it, is it fairly easy to get those materials? It's not actually. So I, whiskey barrels are pretty readily available. We, we source them from Kentucky, uh-huh. like where bourbon is, is made. Yeah. Um, it's the only place that you can actually make bourbon. So uh, it's pretty interesting. I didn't know that until I explored this. I didn't know that yeah. until you just said that. Yeah. So, so, wow, fun fact. <laughs> fun fact, yeah. And uh, so, you know, things like those those Yankee Stadium seats that you, re- you referenced at the start of the show, we actually had to purchase those one off from different buyer or from different sellers, whether wow. it was eBay. Um, I think we had even a couple of them were like Craigslist. I mean, we had to track them down and they're not cheap. I mean, they're. Oh, they're, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and those are at a much higher price much point. Higher, yeah. More limited, higher price point, um, high end movements, things like that. And uh, we've done really well. We've always sold them out. We usually do them in runs of about 500 pieces. Yeah. And yeah. that's a, it's such a, I mean, I feel like sports is always an awesome segue for a a product to have you know something focused on that yeah I mean that's why I was really intrigued because he was wearing it and it's a conversation starter it's more than like oh cool watch it's like actually this is from you know the stadium I'm a huge fan um so I wanted to ask you how do you guys kind of tell the story behind your product because I feel like right now especially with social media Mm -hmm. and influencers I always see people pushing different products right. and a lot of it I notice other than, you know, beauty stuff is definitely sunglasses and watches. Right. Just from my experience, mm-hmm. whether that's true or not, <clears throat> I feel like those are pretty prominent. There's bigger, been some bigger brands, online brands right. putting themselves out. And so how do you kind of, how did you step into that space and try to be competitive? Because right. I feel like you've got these, you know, popular, um, brands running on social, but then you've got the real big name brands, right? whatever those might be like Nixon, Michael Kors, all like the well-known brands. So how did you insert yourself into that? Well, I think our differentiator is built into the product itself, right? So because we use such unique materials and the watches are so different, it it is a double-edged sword. I will say though, I mean, I think especially on Instagram, there's a, an aesthetic, Mm-hmm. And we may not necessarily go directly with that aesthetic. I mean, our watches, they stand out. They're more niche, though. Mm-hmm. And so I think the, one of the things we've done a good job, though, is educating the consumer on what the material is, the craftsmanship that goes into it. I mean, the way that they're made. Um, we've found that that really resonates with our customers or mm-hmm. potential customers. They want to see more of that. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes like the less produced as well like if they just maybe want to see an iphone photo of like how the the woods cut they don't necessarily need to see like a 30 second or a minute and a half you know second edit totally where we kind of you know if it feels too produced and too polished sometimes it's funny like it doesn't yeah. perform as well as the stuff that's a little it's more it's funny we've like kind of gone backwards we have on that yeah. it's like it started as like oh the most like you know high res yeah. quality yeah. stuff and i think that's also why instagram is so popular right is because you kind of get a behind the scenes and it's real but I will say, I went through your guys' Instagram. Your product photos are awesome. Yeah. I mean, you're definitely, obviously, targeting men, for sure. Right. It feels like the More manly, manly watch, yeah. you know? Yep. Um, so how did you guys kind of work the story into your marketing, I guess, would be my next question. Because you have to have some way to communicate the differentiator right. in an ad in a video or whatever it might be. So how did you guys kind of work that into your marketing strategy? Yeah, well, I think, again, we like to tell the story from start to finish because there's there truly is a story to tell. Like, mm-hmm. you know, again, it's built into the product. So we actually would go to Kentucky, like, for example, and, like, show, like, where we get these barrels. How are they made? 
well, what happens to them when they're done, you know, aging bourbon, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing. We did a collab with uh, New Belgium recently and went to Fort Collins in Colorado and we deconstructed this big 20 foot barrel. It's called the Fooder. I didn't even oh, know wow. what that was, but uh, they age sour beers in there. Oh, cool. Kind of cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But, so we'll like show the deconstruction process of like, where are we sourcing this wood? How is it? Um, how, are, how are things like either deconstructed or, you know, repurposed into our watches and then we'll so it, it's really like the marketing is built into the product like yeah like through and through and that's why i think like now more than ever i think authenticity is like what customers are looking for and buzzword yeah, yeah absolutely right it is a, it's in it's funny i i'm gonna just keep saying it because i already yeah. do it's in every single one of yeah. these podcasts no matter yeah. who's sitting across yeah. from me it's just constant and it's becoming it is becoming a buzzword because it's so critical yeah like if without that and you can't tell someone you're authentic you have to show them you're authentic exactly right? like i'm like hey guys you want our watches because they're authentic like that's total bs like we need to show them you know I, anyway you, and, I, and i think i like to think at least we do a good job of kind of show showing that process yeah through and through and being consistent about it so like we're not going to just stop like we're continuing to push the envelope on what we can do and it might not might not just be wood like we're looking at things a little sneak peek into next year like we're looking at materials that that are not just wood so whether it I, I can't really say what, but I mean, other natural materials. Yeah, it could come up, you know, I have a couple ideas yeah. on the top of my head. Mm-hmm. But that's something else I was going to say that's really unique is it feels like there's so much room for you guys there to is. expand. Mm-hmm. And I know I saw like a few watches for women. So it seems like you guys are dabbling yep. a little yep. in that space. And I'm already like thinking of things that would be cool for in you that, know yeah. women to wear. And something we, I've talked a lot about with our uh, CEO is just kind of the trend right mm-hmm. now to want to buy something that means something. Right. You know, and we kind of always use the example of like Tom's shoes. That's like, you know, a trailblazer and, yeah. brand of, you know, giving back and buying something. But now I think we're kind of moving towards we just want something that's like special right. and unique. Feels like it's for me. And I mean, there's still plenty of people that love big brands and are fully loyal to that. But I think I would say, especially our generation, there's that kind of desire to want something unique and not just be the same right. as everybody else. Yeah, so- I absolutely agree. Yeah, I think it's I think it's sort of where we're headed. And, you know, I think people pride themselves on finding, discovering that new up and coming brand. Uh huh. Um, you know, it's tough because I think every brand aspires to become the the brand that everyone knows. And I think yeah. that's something we should aspire to. But I think at the same time, the the culture is is wanting something that's different. It's wanting something unique for and sure. And that's all we can do right now because yeah. we're, I mean, there's so many businesses and companies yeah. making the same product. And, you know, now Amazon's around. It's like there's just even more of a need to have that business that just has something special. Right. Like even your guys' homepage video, I watched that. Yeah. Awesome. Like, you know, it's just you really start connecting with the brand. And that's so important right now, really connecting with the brand. Because, like, you can only do so much with a product. Mm -hmm. It's like your marketing, I really love it. It's awesome. A little deeper, like. Uh, there's there's emotion tied to that right and yeah so that's something we've we've really tried to, to do a watch of all things of all things right yeah i know like one of the one of the more old you know accessories i mean they've been around for hundreds of years now so yeah totally yeah. so how did you guys kind of start first like marketing it when you first launched it like what are some of the different avenues that you explored yeah well we were lucky enough to launch in 2013 with, uh, with that crowdfunding campaign, which I feels like oh, there were a lot of successful campaigns around that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were able to not only catch that wave of crowdfunding when that was new and cool and up and coming and, and really ride that wave, but also social media when it yeah. was relatively inexpensive in comparison to like where it is today. It feels it's like so it's nuts how far it, it's like 30% <laughs> year over year. I mean, it's just like it's year crazy. over year over year. Over, I mean, comparison to what back in 2013, it's probably, I don't even know. Yeah. Um, up a lot. So yeah, we were fortunate enough to be able to leverage, you know, the inexpensive costs of literally just on Facebook, yeah. uh, social media, uh, influencers, um, just blog accounts, which that's changed so much over the, of the years. You know, I remember like just having like literally like a men's fashion post, like repost our image. They wouldn't even create content. They would literally just post an image that we want. And that thing would just get so much engagement. That's awesome. You know, it's just changed a lot in, yeah. the, in the last years. Um, we've always been a huge, um, 
fan of email. I mean, yeah. I, I definitely think that's, you know, it's funny because there's been like these waves of like, is email, you know, in exchange for SMS? And like, they're both important. Like, totally. I mean, that's why we have, we incorporated SMS into our platform. Right. And it's kind of just that, like, you don't need to pick one. No, absolutely not. But you not. do need to be doing email. Uh, especially no right now, yeah. the amount of products we are all buying out of our emails for the Christmas yeah. season. I mean, I took, like, I got a, a code today for, like, 5% off something, which is, like, nothing. And I was like, oh, fine. I'll, you know, no, I'll use the code and yeah. buy it. Yeah. So, yeah, email is totally relevant. But going back to what you were saying about Facebook, I feel like, that's a great starting point because Facebook makes it so easy to test things out and try different right. target audiences. Right. So I'm sure that was a good way for you guys to get a feel for, you know, what people were being, what people were what responding types of people, to things like that. And yeah. I think the common elements of that, especially for a product like you guys have is kind of cool. Cause you're always, I always tag people on Facebook and cool stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I still remember the beginning. That, and again, it's changed. Like, I think the behavior itself has changed. Like, people are still tagging and, and commenting and liking. I, although I, just, I would beg to differ the liking part, which now they're removing that on Instagram. I mean, it's just crazy how yeah. much thing is, things have changed. But I do remember when we first put, like, our first ads on Facebook, which Andrew and I initially just ran ourselves before we, yeah. you know. I mean, that's what we all yeah, got to right? do in the beginning. You know, and I remember, like, the engagement was through the roof because it was such a unique product, but it helped our, our reach, especially back then when the algor algorithm was so much different. Yeah. And we would get so much organic reach off of, like, a paid ad because there were that many people just engaging with it. And it would, you know, of course, they liked that. And yeah. The, and they, that would show it to more people. And so I just remember it was, like, it, it just worked. Totally. Um, it still does today, but it's just it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. And like you said about email, like, that's just so important because it's something that's yours. Yeah. And I think, oh, yeah. you know, we all yeah. love social. Like, we, Sendling does social. It's huge. But you never know what the, I mean, if Facebook went down tomorrow, how many people. How many brands would, would how, suffer. Yeah, how many yeah. brands would just go down mm -hmm. in flames because right. all their spend is there. Right. So I think that's kind of the, the primary reason that yeah. email is so important because those are your people. You're that, collecting their information yeah, and yeah. it's yours And to there's have. no marketing costs so once you have the email. so Totally. Just, you know, so, you know a minor spend on a excellent email platform An that's ESP all that's awesome yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um as you guys kind of continue to you know expand the brand where are you guys going in like the next year i know you guys said like mm -hmm. new materials and everything yeah. but are there other ways you guys are trying to expand the company as a whole like how many people do you guys have working for you now yeah so we have about 20 of us in the office um obviously looking to grow that as much as possible yeah. um, for sure. But also, and I think that's, been, I mean, hiring and has been a huge part of like how we got to where we are today, hiring the good, good people. I've seen the value of that recently as an entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur, like you have to hire in order to grow. And I think we've made a lot of really good hires and, and I'm, I'm really excited about some of those new people on board. One of which is um, a new product designer. I uh, just brought him over in January um, it, who has a ton of experience working at a big brand. Yeah. Um, and it, that's a perfect segue into kind of where we're headed. Yeah. Um, we, it's funny you ask because it's so top of mind for us right now. We're actually getting ready and not a lot of people know this, but to revamp one of our oldest, most top selling collections, um, just as we start to evolve, uh -huh. I think, you know, in the beginning, Andrew and myself and, you know, we had some freelance designers, not to say that I'm mean, clearly enough people have wanted the product where it was good, yeah. but we want now, we, now we want to be great. So like totally. in order to do that, we need to, we need to evolve. We need to improve our designs. And so for next year, we're planning to roll out a bunch of new product. It's specific, specifically watches, mm -hmm. um, four or five new collections, which is a lot for us, uh, along with, uh, three women's. So nice. it's going to be a busy year keep my eye out yeah. for that. just in terms of new product. Um, and the designs are going to change. Not, we're still going to be pay homage and respect to where we came from. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the design, it's definitely going to evolve and in our opinion, get better. So part of that is talking to the customer too. Like that's something we've done a good job of recently is just talking with our customer will be a, be a survey on yeah. social media, kind of trying to understand what it is that they're looking for in terms of the design, size, material, color, things like that. Totally. So. That's so that's so good to do, too, yeah. with your audience, because I feel like it's really easy to assume what the next step is based on your own observations of your brand and your company. But a lot of times you start talking with yeah. your customers and you're like, oh, you're like, oh. 
Yeah. That's a great idea. I didn't, or I didn't think about that. We all think we know. I mean, it's just, it's, it's human nature, right? Especially totally. as like founders or, I mean, not even founders, just people who work for the, you're so close to it. That's one thing I've realized recently is just a breath of fresh air, whether it's an employee or an outside perspective from a customer. Yeah. They bring, there's so much value in that because yeah. I've been living and breathing it for seven years now. Yeah, it's your and, baby. And I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> probably a little too close to this. So yeah, no, it's 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 always good to get that feedback. Yeah, and you've truly had like that true entrepreneurial experience of doing it yourself, right? In the beginning and having a team, which is awesome. And I feel like that's you know what this podcast is all about. Obviously, is like growing, scaling your e-commerce business, but. Regardless of who's listening, it's always good to hear somebody that started, you know, literally from the ground yeah. up with just trying yeah. to figure out ads yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good example of if you don't know, try to figure it out. Yeah. You know? Well, and I, I've, I've always prided myself probably maybe to a fault, like on knowing every aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. And I've got, I have friends who are on both sides of the fence with this, you know, mentors and so, so on and so forth that, you know, at some point you have to let go, right? Yeah. But I do, I think it's important. I just do. It's a, it's a philosophical belief of mine that you should know pretty much every aspect. Like, you know, there's like big companies. I think it's like Zappos or I can't remember. Like you have to start in like customer service and like, I don't know. Oh yeah, Zappos. Is, is Zappos? Well, I, Zappos is huge on customer service. You know, service, like there's certain, yeah. like I just, I believe in that and I know never, but like, I've learned all aspects of the business, whether, you know, it's in the weeds on the Facebook side. Like I've removed myself, not completely. I still like talk, but like we have an agency and someone who manages the agency and someone uh -huh. like, I'm not like in there looking at what a fit in affinity audience is and what our lookalikes look. I mean, but I understand it. I understand our email. I understand uh, logistics and our supply chain and forecast. You know, you start to un customer service. You, I think it's important to know all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, yeah. it is your business yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, so I do want to ask you, uh, like, how do you do you see repeat customers happening with your watches? That was my next question. I couldn't remember. But yeah, do you see people coming back to buy your watch again? Like, how are you yeah. retaining customers? I think in this age of direct to consumer. Customer retention and lifetime value is obviously. I mean, but talk about buzzword LTV. I mean, oh yeah, that LTV is, is like the, the second right. authenticity LTV. LTV. Yeah, like those two things. <laughs> Take and notes, sometimes people. they're interchangeable, right? <laughs> yeah. LTV first. No, uh, I mean because you know customer acquisition costs have become so high, so expensive. Totally. So how it's do you so how do you retain? Expensive to acquire a new customer. Absolutely. And so what do you do with that customer? You need to nurture it, create brand loyalty. I mean, there's articles left and right on this because it's because it's so important. So. Um, to answer your question, we've actually seen pretty good um, our, year over year. Our repeat customer rate has gone up. Like this year, I think we're year to date around 20 20 percent of our purchases are from repeat customers. Wow, which is I think pretty high for watches. Yeah, I was gonna like, say. I mean, I'm not an expert in this space, but a higher price point and a watch and a watch, I would imagine, would be more challenging it is, to yeah. get a repeat customer because I think there's something inherent about a watch, right? I, as a watch, as a watch owner, as a co owner of a watch company, I totally get it. Like if I didn't own my own company, I would probably own maybe one or two of the same brand, but I want to diversify my collection. Right. Yeah. That's just, I, you know, you see people's pictures of their watch boxes, right? They pride them on like, they may have like an Omega and a Shinola and original grain. A, yeah. So on, it's a fossil, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's natural. So yeah, it's been really good to see that. Um, we have some pretty strong loyalists and, you know, again, I, th I think we're trying to broaden that still a little bit yeah. as we evolve, widen our design aesthetic and yeah. try to appeal to more people as well. Well, I could imagine, too, as you continue to expand on the materials that right. you're using, if I, you know, have a watch that's made from a whiskey barrel and you launch a new watch that happens to be my favorite sports team right. and has a piece of their stadium or whatever. Yeah. Of course, you know, because it's totally different. Yeah. And I love that that's what you guys have worked into your product. That, and I think I think it's really unique yeah. because you know i myself own a few watches but they're just the trendy social brands yeah. from influencers right and they look good yeah like there's i mean there's no doubt about it right and i think there's 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 a place for that maybe in your arsenal but like yeah i truly obviously i believe in what we're doing so <laughs> I'm, well th those you know. are also a lot more a uh, lower price point. Yeah. So you still get that. Like it's pretty, but it's a lower price point. And you guys are at that unique higher price yeah, point. Yeah, mid to high range. So yep. you're still in that niche and right. you've obviously found your place. Right. You guys seem to be rocking it, yeah. which is awesome. And yeah. I love getting our, 
you know, fellow San Diegans. I know. In here, we have such a cool like ecosystem for sure building here, and I think it'll only continue yeah. to be that way as people, you know, don't want to be in, you know, up, up in yeah. LA or yeah. up in the Bay Area, yeah. you know. So come on down to San Diego, yeah, guys. It's sunny. Um, and then lastly, before we wrap things up, I want to ask you, what would be your one recommendation to somebody that um, might be trying to get their e-commerce business off the ground, but doesn't really know how to put themselves out there, put their brand out there? Like, what's yeah. the very first step in your mind? Well, I'm not just saying this, but I think email is critical. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. Are you sure? Uh, no, I'm just saying that. Because there's plug. an email no. envelope on the wall. Yeah. Wait, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she told me to say no. Uh, no, I, I really do. I've, I, I have friends who actually um, coach some of this stuff. Like they built a business helping people do this. Uh -huh. And I'm telling that's what they one of the first things they preach, right, is building that list. Even if you're spending a bit of money to, to gather those those leads, right? Yeah. Um, essentially, there's a lead. Yeah, um, totally. Just like in any business, whether it's product or service or whatever it might be. And again, you own that information now, right? So you can continue to market to those people. And most likely, those people signed up because they're interested. So it's not only a lead, it's a warm lead. I think that's a huge part. I know everyone has certain, they may or may not have any marketing budget. So mm -hmm. that's hard too, right? Yeah. This day and age, thankfully, there's influencers who, you know, depending on, it's gotten, dip, it's become more difficult to send just a product in exchange for a post, right? Like, oh, yeah. That's, but that's where those micro influencers come out, come into play. Yeah, micro influencers like 10, are a thing. I've just learned that on a podcast a yeah. few months ago. And like nano, there's even nano. I learned that oh. too. We had um, somebody in here that runs a social platform. Okay. And they were teaching me that. Yeah. And I, didn't know yeah. that but it totally makes sense there's something to be said for those those influencers at 10 20 even 5,000 followers that you want to talk about authenticity and engagement i mean those people can sometimes get more just as much engagement as someone who's got 50 or 100,000 because totally. those people almost feel like they're they're a friend like almost right like yeah there's just yeah i just think that there's still an opportunity it's just a, as much of an opportunity down there. Yeah. I, I know the big shiny object is the ones with 500,000 and a million, but number one, they're super expensive. And number two, they don't always back out on an yeah. ROI basis. So totally. So mm. that's, if you don't know where to start yeah. email and some influencer, exchange influencers, for products. don't try to reach for the stars and you're yeah. not ready just yet. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a great piece of advice. Well, and get out there too. Like get out there. And like, I remember we don't do it as much anymore. We just were at the LA Auto Show, like big show, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but it took us years to get there, right? Like five hundred thousand people went through. My, Andrew was my brother was just up there, but like in the beginning, like go set up at a I I don't know farmers market or wherever it is, but like it doesn't have to be. It could be at a coffee shop that's on brand with your brand, right? Get some customer feedback. Like, what do they like about the product? What do they yeah. not like? There is that is so invaluable, and it's sometimes hard to hear it. But like that's critical. Yeah, and you're still doing that. Yeah, and we're You've still scaled doing your business, that. Yeah. and you're still like, hey you guys, what do you think? That's free intel. Totally. You know, from so. the people who honestly know your product the best because they're using it every day, yeah. paying good money for it. Yeah. So I think that's a great yeah. piece of advice. Um, I'm glad I got you. Yeah, thank you. In the studio, I know it's a you know pop in time of it year, is, yeah. especially for e-commerce. I mean, it is like promotions galore yeah, yeah, totally. right now. Not to mention, you know, I'm sure you have all your own family stuff going on and yeah. all that jazz. So thank you for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Um, and before you know, we kind of wrap up the whole episode. I want to make sure that our listeners know where they can go to check out your product, yeah. check out promote any promotions you have going on, any new products you have. Yeah, coming out. You originalgrain.com uh at originalgrain on instagram and yeah we definitely will be on the lookout for some of the new pro we got promotions all all month through like the 20th and then uh next month uh, we have some new products coming out awesome. and it should stay pretty consistent through the end of the year so. i'll keep my eye out yeah. i'm keeping an eye out on a watch for my husband but yeah the problem is he's a Diamondbacks fan uh -oh. and an Eagles fan. I'm yeah, not either. sure that that's <laughs> not it's not necessarily the, 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 the most bigger, like yeah. popular yeah. team. So I'll keep my eyes peeled yeah. if you get any Eagle seats in there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah. It was awesome to have you here, Ryan. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, and for you guys listening, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please uh, show us some love, subscribe, give us a follow, leave us a review, like us, whatever that action is, wherever you're streaming the podcast or if you're watching us on YouTube. And again, quick reminder, I mentioned it at the beginning of the episode, but we have a new course, e-commerce email Academy. Um, you'll learn all the ins and outs of email marketing, how to make it the number one revenue driver for your business. And you heard it in this podcast from Ryan. It's super important for e-commerce and the goal of the course is just to educate you we're not selling you on anything it's not send lane centric it is literally to help you master email marketing for your online store so you can get started with that course at ecomemailacademy.com backslash podcast and of course if you want to give Sendlane a try you can head to sendlane.com and take a test drive of our platform for free it's a 14 day trial no credit card required so i highly recommend you just jump in there uh, play around, see if it's a good fit for you guys. And thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you next time on the Marketing Automation Hustle.